Uh, thanks for coming, everyone. And uh, my name is Bill Masoulis. Uh, I'm co curator with Chris Luskri uh, of this series, um, Unknown Pleasures. And uh, I'd just like to thank the cinema as well um, for allowing us to program this kind of alternative work. Uh, more broadly, I'd like to thank uh, the traditional owners of this land uh, for allowing us to live, work and play here. Uh, after 250 years of abuse, uh, they should have probably kicked us out, but uh, my respect to all the elders uh, of this um, country and throughout the whole Kulin Nation, uh, my love and solidarity with uh, all Indigenous people. Um, the film you're about to see is a, is a great film. For me, anyway, it's uh, the director's probably best film. Um, he, uh, what can I say, he's, he's, he's a phenomenon. That, that's what I said, I think, on Facebook um, about a week ago. And, uh, you know, just, okay, he's made a lot of uh, feature films. He's made about 10 or 11 in the past, you know, five, six years alone almost. And um, it's, the, it's what's in the films as well. And this particular film of his, uh, like, you could say that there's, like, um, in, in the art cinema world especially, or just in all cinema, that there's, like, a slow cinema exists and a fast cinema. And what this film is, is, is actually like a blend of the two. So, it, 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 as a creation, it's quite an artistic film. And, and I just love the themes, I love the, the atmosphere, uh, the actors are just fantastic, you know, these are not your, you want to be, you know, you know, TV actors and all this, you know, these are kind of real people. And um, I know some of them have uh, acting experience, others not so much. Maybe even Lorena is the lead, and she didn't really, the, the girl from, from kind of Mexico and it's in the film, uh, she, you know, she's not an actress, so... Uh, and she's also like a co-writer of the entire yeah. film, yeah. roughly. So yes. yeah. So uh, actually, I won't say anything more uh, because you know it's a it's a longish film. It goes almost two hours, and we will have a Q and A at the end. The Q and A will be moderated by Fiona Villella, um, who's uh, who's an editor of Senses of Cinema, the online uh, film journal, uh, one of the original founding editors as well, 20 years ago, and so she'll run the Q and A. So. Uh, I'll pass you over to, I don't think I even said his name, Matthew Victor Pastor, MVP legit. Wow, wow, okay, um, yeah, so, hi. <laughs> uh, just before we commence the Melbourne premiere of A Pencil to the Drug Dealer, I want to acknowledge the Wurundjeri Woiwurrung people of the Kulin Nation, who are the traditional owners of the land. We pay our respects to elders, uh, past, present and emerging. It's great to see everyone here. A lot of familiar faces and new faces too. I want to thank everyone involved with the film. I want to thank Bill, Chris, and the Thornbury Picture House for putting this on. A huge thanks to the cast and crews, many of them who are not in Australia right now. And uh, life in a post-COVID 2020 world is its own thing. Uh, I miss a lot of my friends dearly, but I uh, want to thank Lorena Zarate for being a huge con contribution to this film um, in uh, the making of this art through a tough time. And I think sometimes as artists we, well, I forget how privileged I am. Uh, while I'm not always financially stable and um, <laughs> impulsive, and I, I've been able to pursue my passion though. And whether that's working part-time, juggling projects, uh, it's always been possible for me to make things, find a way to do it. So I'm blessed to have many contributors, friends and family, but my ability in itself to create is a massive blessing. Um, I don't have many barriers to jump over or obstacles, but for many migrants uh, across the world and in this country, uh, anyone who leaves the motherland to find a better life, the hardships they face, some depicted in the film, they are, in this film, fictional, but they are harsh truths. So I want to also say before the film starts to content warning for some of the scenes and depictions of racism and sexism and a scene uh, with an attempted rape uh, in the film. Um, it's in the first, oh well yeah, it's, it's in the first 10 minutes I think and, and it, yeah. So yeah, um, yeah, so there's a content warning for that and I want to also add one thing. This is a climax in my sad, melancholy, depressing, body of work. 
I uh, am approaching my mid-30s now and I want to say that I think that that's maybe possibly out of my system. <laughs> and, um, I might possibly make a comedy next. And I think I am, I've already got one in the works. So there's that and a few other projects like with Tavis and more, few, more, more. Yeah, thank you. Again, thank you so much for being here and enjoy a pencil to the jugular and drinks later because I'll be at the bar. So, <laughs> Libra, I'm sorry for calling you for... I know I haven't called in a while, but it's, it's Amanda. I need to talk to you. Um, are you, are you busy? I need to talk to you, like, right now. Please. Can you please pick up? please. I just want to comment, so you, you're the director of photography as well as a writer director. Um, Co-writer co with Lorena, co yeah. Sorry. Lorena contributed a lot to it, yeah. So in terms of the, the camera work, so the, like the, the, the film is noticeably bookended book with those wide shots of the, uh, the city uh, skyscraper. But the majority of the film are, uh, is made up of intense, oh, intense close-ups of your of your characters, um, and I guess like yeah, Bill, you know, made reference to slow cinema, but there's a there's a lot of uh, melodrama and soap opera in the best possible meaning of that word. Um, you are your camera is so caught up in the drama and the emotions of your characters, and that was that's obviously intentional on your part. You know, as as the DOP, is that is that the kind of approach that you bring? Uh, yes. So I, um, <laughs> the more I watch my work, I realize how much my um, my state of mind plays uh, into the work. And I'm around the uh, a few years before I'd made this film, I was diagnosed with BPD and ADHD, adult ADHD, and I think it's quite clear in the film because I think the way that I frame things up is that mix of, um, you know, complete melodrama and chaos and then calm. And that's pretty much how my mind functions between those two paradigms, constantly. And I said this last um, time also, but it's very much a reflection of that world. And when you're the kind of uh, auteur that has to work on a limited means, meaning you have to a camera operate, hold the camera, write, direct, you know, it becomes extremely personal and that is very evident in the film, I think, in not just the way that the melodrama and the heightened stakes are, but also the silences, because that's also how I see the world. Um, and it's a beautiful, I think it's a really beautiful um, thing that, that, I, that I have access to in, in terms of making art. Now, my everyday life, now that's a different, that's a different thing, <laughs> dealing with those emotions constantly. <laughs> In terms of the writing, yeah, so you, you, you're moving between time, February and March, colour, black and white. Um, so, like, how, like, what was the process of writing the script and did you have this structure in mind from the outset or did it evolve uh, throughout the process of writing it? Yeah, so because of the uh, time frame that we were in and, you know, in, in a... In another world, another film exists, but we were shooting something and then a certain situation happened that, you know, changed the whole course of history. And that very thing of, that happened in the start, at the start of 2020 turned into a few films that I made, this being one of them, of me trying to timestamp that. But there was a film, an outline of a film that existed before this film, but then we had to quickly move and change things. and. 
Because you know when you when you're working with people that have a similar vision and I, ideology to you, it's quite easy to kind of uh, be able to. And I know the words overused, but pivot, you know, pivot and you know do different things because we all share the same kind of uh, outlook on art and creativity and expression and this kind of beauty. And if you can, if you look carefully at the characters, they're all most of the characters in this story are. Creatives, as you know, you know, you know. I, I know a drug dealer, rapper, and a, music, a musician, a poet. Uh, um, they all have aspirations, and I think that's very underseen in terms of, you know, <laughs> the broad term of migrant story, or um, I guess you know a diverse story. You know, it's usually just the struggle, but there's no, you know, it's it's kind of a bit cliche, and I think I wanted to utilize some of the beauty that we have as as people and creatives and i think that all shows in that um capturing of the art form alongside what happened to a lot of us artists so the characters are they to what extent do they contribute to the um the actors to what extent do they contribute to the characters that they played and are they are the characters kind of semi real people in the sense that they are or they are artists in their real life. Actually, uh, uh, yeah. On that note, there's a few there's a few of them in in the audience. Like Mikhail's here, Philip is here, and um, I mean, honestly, if you if you want to come up, you can come share the stage. And and uh, I don't know. Come on up, guys. So, yeah, Daniel. Uh, anyone wants to come up? We'd love to see you. Anyone? Hey, no? hey, 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 hey it's da 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 Daniel's here. Um, Steve. Does anyone else want to? Want to join the tier or not? <laughs> no? Okay. All right. All right. Cool, bro. Yeah. Mikhail's is an amazing performance. Also, designer. Um, you know, uh, musician. Um, although doesn't hasn't made a, yeah, I haven't made music lately. But you know, super creative, super talented, and clearly can act. Plays a straight up role, and and Philip here too, and Dan of course. These people are like all all the, uh, you know, the friends. You know, <laughs> we we without yeah, we just we do our thing. You know, so yeah. I'm not done yet, man. What's your problem? Uh, you're kind of weird, huh? Why were you messing with my friend the other day? The schoolgirl? Mary. Yeah, the schoolgirl. She's 18, in her final year. Okay, bro. Whatever you say, man, you're still weird. Have fun. Uh, it's the rough cut of the grown up video. Oh, uh, yeah. Bro. Fucking Steve, man. What do you do? He's just fucking. Uh, fucking crazy, bro. I just saw him outside and I just get like a real weird. Weird vibe from the dude, you know? Yeah, um, remember the socks I was telling you about? Well, the ones he lost? Or? Yeah, I think I saw him fucking wearing them. <laughs> what? Yeah, Yo, ba those basic. Basic socks, those white socks. Yeah. Okay, dude. That's yeah, fucking that's weird. Sick. Anyway, fuck it. So, so what was the process of casting? Uh, yeah, how, how did we make a Dance Dance Revolution? Yeah, we were just playing Dance Dance Revolution. Yeah, I played DDR. <laughs> <laughs> the arcade. Yeah, yeah. The guy that... Matt was cast first, and you thought I looked like him a bit? Yeah, well, I mean, I just was like, hey, there's this character, and I'm like... I think we could just make something, I don't know. Yeah. And then I kind of wrote it and around like, we've had heaps of talks. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty, pretty chill. Yeah, it was a very interesting character to play, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just, um, yeah. yeah, but that's, that's the organic thing about it. Like people I meet and then we all become friends and it all kind of comes together and it kind of, <coughs> kind of becomes a film. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, should we throw it out to the audience? Cool. Is it, like. Would anybody like to ask uh, Matt or Steve? Dan, Dan, <laughs> Dan, Dan, play, Dan you can play Steve. Yeah. Which soju company sponsored this film? <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, yeah. Well, there's a lot of soju in the film. Soju is great. Do you just enjoy it? Yeah, I think yeah. we... Hey, what do you think of soju? Soju's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> I think we love, we love the soju. Did, soju's did you pay more good. with soju? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, of course not. <laughs> um, there's a... Hey, um, so did you find the, both like the, I'm guessing, monetary hindrance, oh sorry, constraint, and the, uh, like, space and COVID constraint to be a hindrance or a help in making this book? The film can't exist without either of those things. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, it's seriously like a product of literally what, um, that time frame was. And I think, it's almost a blur to me because how, 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 how crazy was that? We'd be like half shooting a scene and then a lockdown would happen and then we'd have to wait yeah then we'd have to like wait again and we'd have to make sure we look similar and <laughs> it's quite yeah. tricky eh? and on and on no budget it's very much kind of or low budget you kind of have to make make do with what's possible and fortunately i have very talented um people around that can can pivot to make that work so yeah testament to everyone around and in their personalities and friendships and some I would miss very dearly because a lot of actually quite a lot of those people are not in Australia anymore I won't go into too much detail but that's just the nature of yeah I guess the, the last few years everything's been quite quite crazy yeah. yeah where did the approach to the comedy come from in the film like when did that emerge and how did you workshop that with the I don't, I don't know. I, I was actually surprised people were laughing, to be honest. But I think it's an uncomfortable laughter because of the kind of truthfulness of some of the observations. I, I don't. We never really saw a, even at that, that scene. It wasn't in any way played for, for laughs, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. It was just heard some people I know laughing though. Yeah, so I think they're just yeah. laughing at me at being that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, perhaps. Yeah, because I, I mean, unless, unless, unless other people did find some of those scenes, but I, I find them extremely confronting personally. But I think that I've also laughed at scenes that I find confronting partly because of the uncomfort of the scenes. So, um, but there's definite harsh truths in those scenes and observations and parallels with how, uh, I guess, the modern world, because it's that scene, I think the scene we're referring to in, in some of those elements are kind of, um, I, I think it's a metaphor for the, the modern world and the face behind the screen, I guess. So we're, we're trying to put a face to that, but also, yeah, the, yeah, the, the text. Actually, yeah, something that I'm actually, I was actually talking to a mate who's here about this about myself, is I often laugh when I'm a bit uncomfortable as well. So I guess people do laugh yeah. in uncomfortable situations. Which I think it's pretty common. Uncomfortable laughs, I guess. I guess absolutely. Um, yeah. I think, yeah. Yes. Um, because it's a, such an intense movie, uh, why do you choose like a very scripted like font throughout the movie? A uh, scripted font. Yes, because like it's because it's very intense movie and stuff. I feel like um, because I'm a graphic designer myself, mm -hmm. I feel like very scripted. Is like very, like very like uh, opposite to what you are showing us. Yeah, I, yeah, it's actually a very good observation. I think I work in contrast, in contrast, just in nature, my nature. Like, even like the way that it's like scripted font, but then it's like, like cursive, and then it's like like a digital, very clearly like almost like in a digital imprint. That's kind of kind of how I think everyone kind of sees the world now, given. You know, if you go on social media, it's like a nice cursive font with beautiful, like, but then it's like very clearly like digital. So I think that's just my, 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 my interpretation of that, I guess. Um, whether it's easy to read or not, <laughs> from a graphic designer's point of view, I mean, even, uh, I mean, I think that's kind of the point too, because it draws attention to it. The same way lowering volume in a film or heightening it, because it's so kind of jarring, it kind of makes you pay more attention. And, I, and I'm very interested in that kind of... Um, a framework, yeah. <laughs> so, I hope that answers the question. Thank you. Yeah. I, like, I really love... Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yep. Uh, the last scene of the film, how long did it take you to shoot that? Because that, to me, feel, felt like it was the most... had the most production value in it. Like, I mean that in a good sense. Actually, on that note, um, that was, was that three, the, three, was that three, three, four hours. 
the box. That was like in general, like I got there at like midday. We didn't finish till like midnight or something. Like yeah, like 10 it was a pretty PM, long. It like, was a pretty long day. But yeah. we had to wait for it to get dark for the last scenes. Yeah, we, we went and had like, lunch and stuff. Yeah, yeah, we did a few of the scenes. Yeah, those last scenes. It was. Well, why did it take so long apart from the lunch? Just mm -hmm. uh, waiting for it to, the, 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 waiting waiting for for it to get dark. We had to wait. Yeah, certain people to get there as well. Oh yeah, that's it, because oh. we're all working part-time jobs and stuff. But um, <laughs> yeah. on that note, I do want to bring up, yeah. it was in the middle, we are meant to be shooting a summer scene, but it was <laughs> winter, so I had to like keep going in and out in a t-shirt, and that, that sucked. <laughs> 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 yeah, it, it, I, I, yeah that, that was one of the hard things, because we that, that's meant to be like February or something, but let's be honest, yeah, these like, days, what's winter and summer? Anymore? When was like, yeah. that like one, like, lock, short lockdown break? Where it was, like, yeah. Like, a few weeks. Uh, of, like, was it July? July? Yeah. yeah. And it's freezing, and I'm just in and yeah. out, and just dying here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gotta make sacrifices when working with the boss. <laughs> <laughs> so like, like, pulling your leg, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Matt, um, it's the first film I've watched um, of yours, and I'm just personally interested in being um, of Filipino heritage as well, like yourself. Do you always include uh, references to your culture, cultural background, Filipino culture, or, you know, I've noticed it a few times, I guess it stood out for me, but do you always make that a I think in your films, I, I try to um, not always, but I I mean, in recent years, yes, much so, and that's because I'm figuring myself yeah. out. Um, yeah, I unfortunately have been growing up and being in a family that tried to keep me away from certain elements of that. I uh, developed a certain way and have been trying to reconnect with that ever since. Trying my best to understand that through cinema, but not always not always getting it, but trying. And I think that's the beauty of art, because it can be, can be messy sometimes, I think. And hopefully, hopefully uh, people in the future will have a timestamp of what it was like, or what some experiences, varied experiences can be like as a, yeah, <laughs> as a Filipino Australian. <laughs> I like how it was quite subtle. It's, it's not in your face, sort of, you know how, you know, for a lot of, uh, people with a Filipino background, they, you know, it's, whenever they get a chance, it's, you know, they wave the flag, they, it's loud and proud, but, you know, I think many, many Filipinos, I guess there might be some here, can still appreciate the subtle references that you include there, and I guess, yeah, it, it, this is very personal to you, you know, about you figuring your connection to your heritage too, so it's great, thank you for that. And yeah, that's really touching for me to hear and the kind of encouragement I need. Um, thank you for, for sharing that. Um, but it is something that I, I think it's quite, it, that, that element's always personal because, because I, there is a disconnect and I'm trying to also tell it through my point of view and that's, I guess, what comes out. So I'm sure there are a lot of, uh, is the term third culture kids or something like mm. this that, that will relate to my body of work um, hopefully the world eventually <laughs> gets to see more of them. Um, but maybe culture needs to catch up, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, but the waving of the flag thing is also a thing that I want to, sorry, I, I just want to touch on. Because I don't always feel comfortable in my own skin and I think that's quite comfortable, uh, I'm guess quite evident in my work. So. Part of what was really intense of the film for me was that you kind of, you didn't shy away from exploring racism, um, and you know, and and the film comes full circle in that goes full circle in that sense. Um, I was wondering, like, yeah, where did you get the recordings uh, right at the end from? Was that? that yeah, yeah uh, you hear. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on on public transport. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Is it worth extrapolating more on the on the idea of like where, what the inciting incident behind the making of the film was? Because it, se it all seems to stem from the initial event of the attack, and how the ramifications of that attack spread out across the rest of the film and affect every part of it, and the way that that attack and the concurrent 
COVID pandemic just goes to reveal racial fault lines within Australia. Could you speak to that a bit? Yeah, so the attack is uh, the same way that actually, I think it's quite, um, I mean, I guess these things have always kind of existed in our framework and I think there were certain things that happened in the last few years that made those things more visible mm. and the media caught onto those things and people experienced those things and it's all in the zeitgeist but at the same time it's all one's experience or one's uh, point of view like art is so i think yeah it's just kind of trying to dissect those frameworks and uh what kind of tensions uh kind of set off certain incidences and things and i mean there's a backstory but like you know you're you know it's not that this character just suddenly became the way they were too i mean sorry it suddenly became the way they were i mean it's not that 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 incident takes place just out of nowhere it's a it's from from an incident and i think that's there's all these kind of parallels that are all coming together and that's why there's a fragmented nature to uh the story, our identity as, a, as, a, as what we call Australia, um, my place in all that, I guess, so our place in all that. Um, and it's messy because not, not, always, uh, not always is it so easy with, uh, I, I guess, identity and, the, and these things to, to explain. But I, what I try to do is, is show an emotive response to that or a poem, and a poem that's quite angry, I think. Mm. Um, and is that where the character's art comes from, perhaps, within the story, and, and obviously more broadly within your, your own practice? Yeah, it's a bit of reflective in that sense. Um, but at the same time, I mean, that poem that Pisces writes, I mean, my, I'm actually a Pisces, I'm a March baby. So, <laughs> you know, um, but that character that pa character Pisces writes a poem, and it's not really in any, you know, the plants being part of the party and the disco ball and all that, that's, that's not like... So there's no anger there, it's more whimsical, if anything, and I think, um, yeah, there's beauty in, in all of that, I think, yeah. yeah. Will you be doing more of like, these stories, because like, I, I thank you for pointing out this message of like, how international students feel, because like, not a lot of people have watched that viewpoint, and will you be, in the future, will you be doing more sort of that? Viewpoint, not just not just from Philippines, like from other countries as well. Uh, yeah, um, I think this film has a varied kind of um, uh, version of that. It has like you know the the Mexican international student, the has a Korean um, character, it has Philippines, it has um, Chinese characters. But um, I yeah I, I I just you know I think the world's gonna bring me the characters that because my world is so varied anyway. Like I live in the city with very interesting people and. I have all these people around, and they'll inform the work. And uh, I think I think there will be more, more to say. Uh, whether it's going to go to that extreme, because I, I think that also, like, I mean, I've kind of done this type of film for a while, and I'm not as angry as I was when I made that. But I do think the experience is really important. But I'll find other ways to tell that uh, that might not necessarily be as a pencil to one's or uh, societal or metaphorical jugular. But, you know, like, there's, there's, yeah. Um, I hope to make more work that, um, it, that, that shows our experiences. I hope to, yeah. So this is not part of the trilogy, this it, film? Or? Yeah, it is. Uh, uh, Neon Across the Ocean, which yeah. you've seen, yeah. and um, we're very kind to, I think, from memory. Um, yeah, that, that was the first one. So it's the past, present, and the or future trilogy, but they're kind of, yeah, there's, there's one other film coming, but I, I just don't know where to place it, because I made, I don't know, I just don't know where to place it. But that's not the comedy? I'm, <laughs> I don't actually know at this point. I've kind of taken a hiatus from filmmaking, it's been really, it's been hard, you know. Do I film director? Yeah, oh, on TikTok. On TikTok. <laughs> Yo, it's film director. Will you put the songs into Spotify soon? Oh, that's all my childhood friend uh, Fergus Cronkite, um, or <laughs> Andrew Tran is his actual name. But um, honestly, I've been asking them to do it for years, but they just don't care. Like they literally, they have, they gave me like fifty songs to just play with over the years, and they're just, 
chilling. Also, Akira Matsuda, who, who did the, um, the rap element of it, and Corey Reason has a, um, Corey Reason did the song Grown Ups in there. So there's a few more of the hip hop songs that are out there. Um, but the, the, the singer, songwriter, folk songs, those ones are kind of, yeah, it's up to Fergus if they ever want to release them on SoundCloud. But that's very nice. I'll, I'll, I'll prompt them. Maybe they'll see this video and maybe I'll cut this segment out and then send that to them to push them in that direction maybe. But do, that may, may not happen. Please do. Thanks. Okay, we should probably wrap it up there. Um, Bill? Sure, if you want to, um, or one last question, if anyone has one. Um, I wanted to ask Matt, um, yeah. like the film that we played last week, um, uh, In Heaven They Sing Karaoke, is like about older characters in their 50s. Okay, would you do maybe some more studies, as you mature, you know, have the more mature characters? I've gone through a mid-life crisis, oh, quarter-life crisis. No, you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't yet, I haven't yet. Okay. Um, okay, um, I want to make more films, I just, I mean, my rent just went up 200 extra dollars or something a week, it's ridiculous. Like, it's, it's hard to even, like, back then I could scrape by and make a film or whatever, but it's just getting unethical. <laughs> like, it's getting to us, I mean, I, when, when things set up, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll go through the corporate life for a few years and then come back and make a movie. Uh. And save him, please. Let's do something. <laughs> well, me and Tavis may be doing something soon, I think. And I, I think a few of the, few of the, you know, some people, in it, you know, we'll, we'll always end up collaborating and doing stuff. It's just it gets harder and harder. And you know, I'm not like I'm impulsive. I need, to, I just need to, you know, I, I, you know, I actually, it's, it's interesting. I used to put every cent and dollar into my filmmaking, and now it's kind of in this odd kind of place where I don't spend as much on my art, but it's more like trying to soothe myself mm -hmm. from the last few years, which is a very different framework. Maybe, maybe when I heal a bit, maybe I'll make the next one, but it might explore that topic and characters that age and mature. And I love writing about everyone because I try to, you know, it's voyeuristic, but I like see a, an individual or, a group and I just make up a story in my head and sometimes it's completely ridiculous but I try to follow the ones that make logical or sense in some way yeah mm. I'd like to make that film I'll try to <laughs> don't get lost to TikTok Christ <laughs> <laughs> does anyone here follow me because um, it's pretty like it's a different format you know but um, it's a dopamine hit that's for sure <laughs> Oh gosh, no, we're doing the existential tech TikTok thing here. <laughs> okay, right. well, thanks um, Matt and, and Fiona, and thanks everyone for coming. Um, let's. Uh, <laughs>probably going to get drinks at the bar down the road because uh, I think um, the Thornbury Picture House yeah, doesn't, the bar's not serving, but there is a bar nearby, which if anyone wants to join, I will continue then. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you.